afternoon, everyone. Happy Friday. Hello, hello. It is Friday. What day is it? January 6th, 2023. I'm so happy to be back after a little bit of a holiday break. I have to say, I feel like I don't even know what I'm doing. I saw you guys talking in the comment that it's nice to get back to crafting. I couldn't agree more. Um, I'm ready to be back to normal, back to regular scheduled programming and all of that good stuff. <laughs> Hello. Oh, Tracy says, first live in her new craft room. So excited. That is exciting. Congratulations on the new craft room. Oh, thank you for saying you like the black and white plaid. That's so nice. Happy New Year to everyone. I hope everyone had a really good Christmas, uh, a Happy New Year. Uh, I'm always, you know, the anticipation for the holidays, but honestly, I'm always ready to just get back to regular um, routine. Uh, so happy to be back to routine. Ethan went back to school this week. He needed to. His schedule is so messed up, you know, teenagers, but... Uh, I also was ready to be back to normal. Hello, Miss Shari. Thank you. Let's see. Hello, everyone. Okay, as promised, today we are going to hot foil. I'm going to kind of hot foil a bunch of things, but we are going to completely put together one card, mixing and matching different foil plates. Everything will be foiled. I mean, it's all very similar, but I'm going to use a lot of my favorite companies' foil plates for the foiling, and I will kind of share extra cards throughout this coming week with some of the backgrounds and elements that we're going to foil today. But I really want to just give you a really good baseline of how to foil. I did one other video. I forgot to link it. Of course I did. Uh, I will link it when we're done a while back where I did a lot of pink fresh, maybe some other things, uh, hot foil plates. Today we're going to do some lawn fawn, some paper tray ink. I have to look at it, my stuff and see what I'm even foiling. Um, and hero arts. That's what we're doing. Uh, but there's foil plates from lots of different companies. These just happen to be some of my favorites. I'm going to show you how I foil, how I get the most out of my foil. I will be using the Spellbinders Glimmer. That is what I have. I also highly recommend the Spellbinders Foil. Much like, and paper is going to be come into play too, but I'll talk about that in a minute. Much like markers that you use on specific paper, for example, I like Zigs on Bristol Smooth or um, Copics or Olos or other alcohol ink markers. Express it blend blending cardstock is really recommended. You can try other things, but I would recommend the Spellbinders foil for hot foiling. If you want to use a laminator, there's mink foil and other things. I know it was a question I saw. I put it out there several places and on Facebook. I had someone want to know about the different foils. I have not had good luck with anything other than Spellbinders foil with this particular technique. Let me see. Kelly says, love paper tray ink. Me too. And Shari says, yay, I love lawn fun. Me too. Today I'm going to do my very favorite thing, which is mixing and matching from all different companies to cre create something completely, you know, that's not company specific, I guess I want to say. So it's just really fun. Uh, a couple things. I have listed the supplies below. I may have forgot some stuff, so I will double check when the live is over. Um, please like and subscribe. We're getting closer and closer to 100,000 all the time. The replay will be available for my replay crew. So replay crew, love everyone. Um, my blog post tomorrow will feature more photos of the things you're seeing here. Um, so that the, there will be photos and things up. I'll have them posted on social and all of that as well. Um, Connie says, do you also do quilting and sewing? I see that yummy fabric behind you. I sure do. Yes, I do. Um, let's see. If you have questions while I am, um, foiling, please drop them in the comments. I know I have to get close to the camera, 
So one of the things I did on Christmas break was go to the eye doctor. I had LASIK about 18, 19 years ago. Guess what girl needs some glasses? It's hardly anything, but at a distance, I need glasses. <laughs> they told me that years ago that I would probably eventually need them. It's not hardly bad. Like I don't get headaches or anything, but I noticed that I cannot read my computer and it's not that, I mean, it's far enough away. It's not near, uh, but I need glasses for that and just a couple little things. So they should be here in about a week and a half. I only have to use them like when I'm doing computer work or when I'm like trying to read your comments. It's just funny to me. I, I, actually wore glasses from the time I was six to until I was what? I feel like 27, 28. So I, I wore glasses or contacts for a long, long time. <laughs> Shari says Thermoweb has a new foil, but I haven't tried it yet. I haven't either. I have an entire drawer full of Spellbinders foil. And that's why, and I've had really good luck with it. There have been a couple colors here and there that I have not loved. But other than that, I have, and it may be the paper as well. So that's what I'm going to talk. I'm going to talk about a couple more things and then we're going to foil. My, looks like my machine is warmed up. I did turn it on ahead of time and I'll we'll talk about that. Um, storing my foil. I actually like the boxes it comes in. I cut off the top and I just store it. I have um, Ikea Alex drawers and in the deeper drawers they will stand up like this. Would it be nice to know what colors inside? Yes, but I literally just kind of look through them and pick one. I usually kind of know what I like. So I just store mine in this. I'm sure there's a better way, <laughs> but that works for me. Um, and the paper, I am going to show you foiling on a colored cardstock, a nice flat uh, colored cardstock. I would not suggest a textured cardstock, uh, but a nice smooth cardstock. But hammer mill cardstock is highly recommended, and by far I've had the best results with it. So it is also linked down below. You can also find it places like Amazon. So keep that in mind. But it is amazing, and my results are always so so good. Yep, Wendy said, I had LASIK in 2007 and now need readers. Yes. Yeah, I, I just had hoped it would last a little longer. He did say, he said it's hardly anything. Because Ethan also had an eye appointment, his annual eye appointment this um, week. And he needed a different prescription. And I said, would he eventually be a candidate for LASIK? And he said, oh, yes, definitely. Because his eyes are exactly how mine were. Uh, but they really want you to be 21 and want you to stop changing. He's slowed down. He hardly changes at all. Um, so Ethan's like, yeah, I want to do it. And I'm like, it is the best thing I ever did. <laughs> I loved because I didn't know what it was like to wake up and be able to see. Um, and so it's fantastic. Let's see. <laughs> so I would love to know in the chat, we had talked about this in the last live of 2022. A lot of you have not even taken your glimmer machine out of the box. Have you taken it out of the box? Let me know. I know um, I saw a couple comments. I can't remember if it was YouTube or Facebook that said you had actually tried it and you were enjoying it. Um, some said they still haven't taken it out of the box. So I would love for you to take it out of the box. Um, maybe you just want to watch today and kind of see. Hopefully this will serve as a good reference for, you know, when you do take it out of the box for foiling. It's addicting. It's really, really fun. It's not something I thought that I would ever want to do, but um, I have to say it's become one of my favorite techniques. It is very um, eye-catching and appealing, and I'm going to flip that camera. Nope, still in the box, Bonnie says. <laughs> and Liz is going to open hers after this. Yay, I love that. Took it out of the box, Susan said, but that is it. Finally, after two years, Susan said, oh my goodness. Oh, and Jenna's looking at it, her brand new one as we speak. Let's see. Donna uses hers and only uses it with hammer mill. I will say when I first got it, I used it with everything and I had a lot of eh, 
so-so results. <laughs> sometimes it'd be great, sometimes it wouldn't, but I just would like persevere. Hammer Mill is like every time it's beautiful, every time. Um, I do have a video that I posted right at the end of 2022 where I did foiling and then I ink blended over it and it will do a hot foil resist. So definitely check that out. And I will link both my previous hot foil video and that one down in the description when we're done. So that replay, or if you come back later, you can easily find those. Let's see. Let me see. Hello, everyone. Let me turn this around. Can I even remember what I'm doing? I don't think so. I need to zoom out. <laughs> All right, so I have my Glimmer Machine here. If you are a Patreon member, you may remember one of our Patreons near the end of 2022, my old Glimmer Machine died and I had to go buy a new one and, ooh, I love it. So this is your machine. I did want mine to heat up because I want to foil a bunch for you. So I have turned it on. And you can see that it, it the power's on and the platform is ready. So this is our platform. This is our shim and our spacer pad. Sometimes with my old machine, I eventually had to put like a car, a piece of cardstock in between these as an extra shim to get a good result. With this machine, I have not found that yet, but I may have to eventually, you never know. Let's see. So here is the card we are going to make from start to finish today. We've got a foiled background. We have another foiled background. We have a foiled greeting. I don't know if you can see that that Let It Snow from Lawn Fawn is foiled, but it is uh, so much fun. I'm not done with snowmen yet. I'm done with Christmas, but I'm not done with snowmen. So I thought we would break out a set and have some fun. Here is another example, same snowman. It's a Spellbinder snowman. This foil plate in the background is Lawn Fawn. It's from their newest release, the Valentine's release. Then this Love is actually Pretty Pink Posh from their brand new release that came out this week. And it's just really beautiful. Just little touches here and there. So let's go ahead. Let's, let me show you some foil plates first maybe and then we will foil some things. I'll show you some other things here. This is a Hero Arts snowflake. This is the positive, and then I did the negative image. I'm gonna show you how to do that. And this is actually the uh, negative image from this one's background, and I just went ahead and already die cut some of these down to make extra cards. I always make extra. I can always use the backgrounds. Anyone know the sandwich for a big shot? I do not. Oh yes, Colorado, um, oh yeah, I'm gonna have to get close, I can't read it, cuppy cake. Is it bad to keep making Christmas cards all through the year? Absolutely not. I will be having Christmas cards all through the year in um, my, I have a series and I am going to uh, do a little bit better than I did last year with that. I actually have it planned when that's going to come. All right, so let's go ahead and start with this snowflake background. This is from Lawn Fawn. And as I foil these, I'm gonna show you who, and make sure I tell you who they're all from. If I forget, you guys holler. Question, Ginger said, do you have any tips and thoughts when it's really hard to disengage the platform from the machine to run through my die cutting machine? I always worry about everything shifting. Um, yes, don't put these on top. So here as I do this, let's go ahead and put down the snowflake background and we're gonna foil this in silver. I will say, it, Ginger, is your machine older? My older machine was harder to disengage than this one. It makes me wonder if they've made some improvements. And I'm just gonna cut off a length here. This is silver, there's also matte silver, there's lots of colors. They have so many colors now, but we're gonna do silver. And you want to put the pretty side is not what we're foiling. It's the dull side of whatever foil it is. And this time I do 
want to use some Hammer Mill Smooth Cardstock. My recommendation, and this is from years of doing this and being irritated, I use a half sheet. I use a half sheet almost every time because then I use a rectangle die, a domed arch die, a circle die, whatever, to cut it out later. I was trying to fit it on a four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel and it shifted all the time and it made me mad. So our sandwich is, we've put down our foil plate, we've put down our foil, our hammer mill cardstock, our thin shim, and our spacer pad. Um, you can wait to put these on. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the timer and when this is solid, we can run it through our machine. So here, if you are having trouble getting your platform out, I would su suggest not putting these on until you've pulled it out, then placing them on and running it through your die cutting machine. Let me get my die cutting machine and move it closer. So I'm just gonna move it right next to it so I can take it right from here to here. So I, in fact, I'll just do it this time that way with, and like I said, with this newer machine that I just got, I usually just put these on top and pull it out and put it over here, but you can go ahead and wait if you want. It's always been this way and it's the only thing that doesn't make me really love foiling. You know, um, my old one was that way. Try waiting to put these on. So my light is solid and you can go ahead and disengage it and this one really comes out easy. My old one didn't. It was kind of a pain like I think you're talking about. I'm gonna take it over to my die cutting machine and what you need to remember is slow and steady. So I just do a slow steady roll through. It's not a race. And my other recommendation from years of doing this and messing up, don't roll it back and forth because it will shift. Let's see. The Cherry Crafter says, do you have any tips on having it not cut through the cardstock? Does the cardstock matter? Yes, probably a thicker cardstock is going to work better. If it's thin, sometimes it can. Don't, maybe try it without, um, maybe use a, a cardstock shim instead of the spacer shim. Try a couple different things to see if that helps because the pressure is what is causing it to cut through. So your machine probably has really tight rollers. I always take my platform and plug it back in so it's reheating. Oh, and look at that, man. That is some good foiling right there. And this is on hammer mill, no over foil. Aren't those snowflakes beautiful? Lawn Fawn, this is a good one. I love this. Let's see. Pretty side, yes, pretty side toward the, the hot foil plate is super important. Um, Catherine has a good tip. She says, I don't even put the paper on until I pull out the platform, then the paper and the plates. So um, Ginger, you might try that as well. That is a great tip. Thank you guys. So now I am going to, oh, that's something I had a question about. So here's something funny. With the newer models, the older ones came with a different tool. The newer machines come with this, which is a magnetic tool. You can also buy it individually if you want, but you can pick things up because they're hot and move them off. This is the third time I've ever used it. <laughs> so uh, one of the questions I received was, how do you not burn yourself? I think I'm, I've burned my hands so much from a hot glue gun that I am kind of, <laughs> uh, my fingers are ruined for life. Also, I do have long nails, so a lot of times I just move it to cool it off because this does get pretty warm. But if you are very sensitive, I would recommend this. It works really good, like, with see the little ones? It works really, really good. With the bigger plates, they're a little heavier, but then you can just push that button and drop them off. So this is a fantastic thing if you're really sensitive to the heat. 
let's see. Yes, Ashley Hoover has a great point. She says, this plate reminds me of last year's snowflake paper from Lawn Fawn. Me too, which it was my very, very favorite Christmas paper from Lawn Fawn. Like, favorite, favorite. Um, and I love that I can make my own now. I am going to now take, because we have this leftover piece of foil, and look how pretty that is. I don't want to waste that. You could throw it away, but I don't want to. This is the Pink Fresh Solid Hot Foil Plate. Spellbinders has one. I think Waffle Flower has one, if I'm not mistaken. You guys can let me know in the chat. You probably know. This is the one I have, so it's what I use. But what it allows you to do, and I want that to get nice and warm, is you can then take this, and what we're going to do is we're going to foil the reverse. So I showed you this a minute ago. It's going to be this. I foiled this and then we're going to foil this. So it'll be solid silver foil, a lot more foil, but it's a beautiful background and we can definitely use it for something. Uh-oh, E. Briggs says mine is a year old and haven't used it yet. I hope this encourages you to try it this weekend. I really, really do. So let's go ahead and heat this up. Um, a couple tips for this. I have heard from some people, and with my old machine, I did find it helped, but with this one, I don't really think I need to. And again, I think it's because it's a newer model. Um, you can click this timer twice and heat it two times. I believe that's a tip from Pink Fresh Studio to get a really good impression. I didn't have to, so uh, I don't know. We're just gonna do it this one time. So I'm going to take hammer mill cardstock again. We're going to move our snowflake plate out of the way. Hello. The cherry crafter. I need a long pickup tool for when I drop things on the floor. Me too. Let's tell someone that that's what we need. Hello, Danielle. Yeah, for sure we need one. see you damaged your nerve endings oh <laughs> yeah probably I just don't find it that hot but that you know what I'm like that with washing dishes and hot water as well so it doesn't really bother me okay it is warm so let's run it through and I I just did not I probably have damaged them, you know, is what it is. So definitely with this slow and steady. Foiling does take practice, Jessica. That is a great tip. She said, much like anything, foiling takes practice. It absolutely does. And that's what I'm hoping to show you with this video today, because we're just going to create a bunch of backgrounds um, that you can hopefully, and hopefully you will do the same when you are doing this and you can create all kinds of fun things with them. Okay, so let's see what our result is. And I just take something sharp and we're just going to pull away. And there's, it might be a little light in a few places, like I probably could have, oh, yep. I probably should have heated this one up twice. But I will be honest with you, I will use this because I think it looks even, I think it looks kind of distressed. I love it. Hopefully I'll get a little better result like I did with this one. I probably had this heat, oh yeah, that's hot, uh, heating up a lot longer for this one than I did for this. So let's do that again with a different hot foil plate. And this is super hot. So... For example, here's our tool. It's not gonna pick this up. This is my suggestion. Just take something like your tweezers. Just be careful of your platform. I lift it and move it to the end and let it start cooling because this is what's hot, the gr dark gray part. Oh yeah. Um, is it Mama Duck? You can get long reach magnets that car repair people use when they drop tools. Yes. Just country girl. Looks like I'm revisiting the glimmer tomorrow. I hope you do. 
it, it just is one of those things that does take a little bit of practice. Okay, let's, I kind of have things everywhere. Let's go ahead and do a couple more white and then I want to show, uh, white cardstock, pardon me. And then I will show you the color cardstock. So this is the Hero Arts Snowflake Pattern Hot Foil Plate. It is just a different style snowflake plate. It's super pretty. And we're gonna do a different color of foil. So this is gonna be, I know it doesn't look like it, but this is called Prism, I believe. But next to this, it looks white, but it's, it's not. This is silver and this is Prism. Use a misty magnet. Oh yeah, that would work good, wouldn't it? Didn't even think about that. I even have one right here. So I'm gonna cut off a piece of foil. And we're going to just place that right over. And see, this is, it's warm, but it's not hot anymore, so. I'm gonna move that because we're gonna need it again. And I'm gonna push the timer button and place my hammer mill cardstock on top. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put my plates here. And this is what we are going to create. And Shari says she loves Prism, me too. And this will really give you an idea of the difference in color. So we're gonna do this one and then we're gonna do the reverse with the solid plate. So here's silver and here's prism. And we're gonna do a couple other colors today as well. Let's see. Deb says I have yet to get a good result. Are you using hammer mill cardstock? That is my number one suggestion because I will tell you when I st first started out, um, when I first started out, didn't know about hammer mill. I, and I was only using like spell binders and I used every color of cardstock under the sun and I wasted so, so much paper. I, I really do think that the hammer mill cardstock is kind of a great one for great results right off the bat. And then once you get comfortable with foiling, you can try color cardstock. Kelly says, I love um, the Aura and Prism. Yes, they're her favorites. Me too. Uh, I know I have not used the Gemini foil press, but definitely let me know in the chat. If you have, Shari says prism on craft is pretty. Oh, I bet it is. Okay, it is heated up. We're just going to move it over to our die cutter and run it through. I know some people really, really, really love the the Gemini system. This is the only one I've ever had, so this is what I'm most comfortable with. I've seen the other one used, but I have not personally used it. All right. So I'm just going to lift up the corner. And look at those pretty snowflakes. I love this. I'm hoping there's, yes, there is a little overfoil. It's, well, it's not exactly overfoil. Let me see if I, well, yeah. Okay, when you pull your foil off, I'm trying to see a good spot where I can show you. My original had more. Oh, here's one. So see how that's not super crisp? There's a little bit of foil stuck there. I take a dry paintbrush and I just do this and it cleans that right up. And there's several little spots. There's nothing super bad, but I just take a dry paintbrush and go over it and that will remove any of the that foil without ruining your actual foiling. Let's see, Vicki says I use Gina K colored cardstock and it foils perfectly. That's great to know. And there are lots, just, I would play around with different ways of doing it. Um, I know one of the suggestions earlier was, 
let me move this and get our solid plate out and get it warmed up. One of the other suggestions was to, you know, place this here and then before you put your paper and your plates on to pull it out and then put it on. So definitely try a couple of different ways and see what works for you. So we're going to do the reverse of this. Question, Susan says, because this is now an entirely new set of pricey die plates that need, are there some basic plates that would be useful to start with? Backgrounds to me are my favorite. Think about how you craft. Oh, let's warm that up. Let me flip this around while it's warming up. I would think about how you craft. My go-to go-tos are, well, I'll see if I can find them here. Spellbinders frames, and maybe some, I think some other companies, Pink Fresh has some, but they're rectangle frames. I love a classy, good, just rectangle frame. They also have a dotted frame. That would be probably one of my biggest go-tos, and then a really good background. So for me, this Lawn Fawn Snowflake can be used so many different ways. It could be foiled in so many different colors, on so many different colors of cardstock with different colors of foil. I just like foiled snowflakes. So I think it would be very, very useful. Um, other good basics, maybe there's some plaids, there's stripes, a sentiment set. Spellbinders does a lot of really good sentiment sets. I'm gonna show you a Lawn Fawn set. Another great thing, and I'll show you this here in a minute with uh, uh, Pretty Pink Posh as well. I, I think some other companies do this as well, but they will have a hot foil plate, but then they will have dies or stamps and dies that coordinate so you can kind of mix and match and choose what you want to use, if that makes sense. So, but I would start with great basics. For me, it's, it's a classic frame or background because backgrounds could be trimmed down. Uh, yes, I, uh, Jungle Baria says, have you tried the white foil? I love it with sentiments on craft or black cardstock. I love the white foil. Love the white foil. Okay, um, Tammy says, the only thing with the Gemini foil press is you have to have the Gemini to die cut you can't use the Spellbinders die cutting machine. Very, very good to know. Jessica says, pulling back the foil is magical or reminds me of the first time I saw someone heat embossing. Isn't that true? I agree. Um, and yes, just country girl, I have had good luck with foiling dies. That is a really fun thing to do as well. Okay, let me grab some paper. Let's not foil my my shim. I have done that. My, In fact, there's a little bit of foiling on this, but my old one, this poor plate, I tried to clean it. I had accidentally forgot to put paper in and I foiled my shim one time. Oops. Please tell me I'm not alone. Um, Julia says she, she has a question. She says she's in the UK and who sells hammer mill cardstock? Does anyone else who might be in the UK know? I would maybe try Amazon UK and see. Yes, Tracy, there is a Spellbinders white foil and it is awesome. There's also like matte colors. I'm, I'm not using a matte color today, but matte colors are magical. I really, really love this. Look at this. The best thing about investing in a solid plate, that's something else. So I know I was saying frames or, or basics are great. Invest in a solid plate from one of the companies I mentioned because it extends what you can get and it also eliminates a ton of foil waste. I used to throw away all of this, and now I have two backgrounds from one little piece of foil. These could be cut down and made into strips on cards and create multiple cards very easily. So you're really getting a lot more um, 
than just that one. CZ says, I have foiled my foil plate. Thank goodness. <laughs> Liz says it's on Amazon. Definitely try Amazon UK and see if the hammer mill is on there. Danielle says, Stampin' Up! cardstock foils great. I want all the colors. <laughs> Liz says yes. Um, can you use any hammer mill cardstock? Okay. I would use the one I have linked. It has like a green iguana on it. I think that's what that animal is. That is the one that is really, really good. Let's see. Chameleon. It's not an iguana. It's a chameleon. Thank you for Little Lane Crafts with Rachel. I knew I was saying that wrong. Thank you. And it is a hundred pound weight. Okay. So let's go ahead and do another solid background on white. And then we will do on a color card stock and then we'll do some sentiments with coordinating dies. So this is, I guess I should bring it over here. This is the Paper Tray Ink Mercury Glass Hot Foil Plate. Okay, you guys, this is brand new from their latest release. I love this foil plate. I think, so I actually have some gla mercury glass trees for Christmas decor. They came out with a basic set of trees, and there's probably lots of different dyes of basic trees. Wouldn't it be cool to foil this in like silver golds, whatever, and then die cut tree shapes and make your own little, you know, tree arrangement on a card that look like mercury glass trees? I like this one so much. But it also makes a really great snow background. <laughs> that is what I used for this snowy background here. It's this mercury glass paper tray ink plate. And we are going to do my very favoritest color of all time, moon dust, because it's this really pretty blue. <laughs> Shari, <laughs> that's so funny. You know, I sort of thought that to myself, but not really. You can text me anytime. So moon dust is so pretty. If you love a really good aqua, kind of aqua, teal, whatever. Isn't that pretty? Oh, I just love the foiling. So we are going to foil this. Now I did not do the reverse because the reverse would just be some little speckles on white, but we can do that. I think it might be kind of fun to see if it works. No harm. Yes, Tracy says mercury glass. I love mercury glass. To me, this is something that I think is a great, great basic or make a bunch of mercury glass hearts. Foil in like some reds and some silvers or golds or even the white on a darker cardstock and then die cut hearts from those panels and have mercury glass hearts, whoops. Gotta hit the button, Nicole, stop talking. And I think you, it just, for Valentine's, I mean, would be really, really cool. Mercury glass Christmas trees, yes! Tags and ornaments, absolutely. Oh, imagine doing like some little ornaments and then you could tuck them into a floral arrangement. Oh, you guys, so many ideas. I love this hot foil plate so much. It's a complete and total basic. It doesn't look like much, but when you foil it, it is so pretty. Here's the other new one from their release. I'm not foiling it today, but I love it as well. Isn't that cool? And they also have like a doily snowflake one that I have foiled in the past. Um, I have some videos on my channel. It is gorgeous and foils amazing. Shari says foiling on acetate is cool too. It needs to be heat resistant acetate though. Absolutely. I didn't even think to do that today. I'll have to do that one of these days. Hearts. Yes. Wouldn't they be pretty, Shari? All right. Let's foil our mer moon dust mercury glass. Deb, who is it from? If it's the mercury glass, it's paper tray ink. I 
I tried to kind of get an assortment. I know a lot of you might be familiar with Spellbinders. So I tried not to do so much of that today and tried to do a little bit of things that maybe you haven't, companies you haven't seen. Ta-da! It's so pretty. So I didn't, I, I think I threw it away the last time, but how about let's just foil this for fun, shall we? It'll give a completely different look. So let's get our solid plate. Let's see, don't use, oh yeah, Carrie, that's a very good point. Don't use acetone on your plates. It will remove the paint. If you accidentally foil your plates, don't worry about it. If you get foil, like, say you accidentally put your foil the wrong way and you foil your plate, I promise you it is still going to work. Just leave it. I have some. I don't have them out and I don't know where it is. But when I first started foiling, I accidentally flipped mine the wrong way and I foiled uh, my plate and it just is permanently that way. We always will know that one is mine. <laughs> yes, it would make a great, it's such a good snowy background. So let's see how this one's going to look. I think it'll be very fun. And then we're going to do some wood grain. This is a Lawn Fawn plate on some brown cardstock. This is Lawn Fawn. It's the dark brown. What's that one called? Why can't I remember? Ground coffee is this color. So that's what we're going to do next. And I got an amazing result first time with that one. I could not believe it. Selena says, will this system work to run through a big shot? It will. In fact, Spellbinders on their website has an entire list of the sandwiches for different machines. So um, I would check that out. But that is one of the great things about the Spellbinders Glimmer system. Yes, I love the wood grain too, Teresa. It is so good. So I was gonna do something and I forgot to do it, so I didn't, but for Valentine's, how cute would it be to foil the wood grain and then die cut a heart from it so it looks like one of those little hearts on a tree and you could stamp or emboss a greeting inside. I think it would be really cute. Oh, it's kind of fun too. Yeah, I'm gonna keep it, I like it. So there is our moon dust. And of course it did foil the outline because it's going to foil anything that touches the solid plate. But I like to just take a die, usually a rectangle die if I want it the whole thing, or I'm gonna show you how, to, how I die cut some stuff here in a minute. Let's go ahead. I don't think we need our solid plate anymore. And Let's grab our wood grain from Lawn Fawn. Yes, Danielle says, if you foil your plates, you're just making them more pretty. Exactly. So for this one, I am going to use, this is copper, the color copper foil. I thought copper would look really pretty on the brown cardstock, and I was right. I like it. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? So we are going to foil the copper on this ground coffee, right? Cardstock, isn't that what I said it's called? So let's go ahead and start warming that up. I have a half sheet of cardstock here and I'm just gonna lay that down. Let's see. Yes, make it look like carved initials exactly. Yes, Molly, that's an awesome goal is to use our hot foil system. 
It's out of the box and she has everything she needs, including paper. Just need to bite the bullet and do it and stop being a chicken. You know what? Just play. I haven't, I have yet to make a card today, but you can just sit down and make a bunch of backgrounds, a bunch of greetings, play with it, kind of see what works, what doesn't, be, and don't go into it thinking you have to make the card from start to finish because um, sometimes that's what causes the frustration. Just play. Play and see what you like, see what colors of foil you like. It is so much fun. CZ says, can you hot foil on top of a hot foiled background or would it then mess up the background? You know, I have not done that. I don't think it would because you're not reusing the original foil, but that would be something to try. We could try it on something. Maybe we'll just try it here. Yes, I like that. Carrie says die cutting large letters from the wood grain would be so cool. Play is a great creative place to start, Chris says. Yes. All right. So we are going to just lift up the corner and look at that. These Lawn Fawn plates are so good. So, so good. Look how pretty that wood grain is, you guys. Fun. You can do the reverse of this as well. I'm not going to. It's a lot of wood grain foil. I like it. I like the little line a little bit better. And so I'm not going to, but you definitely can. Let's do some greeting, shall we? I'm gonna go ahead and do these pretty pink posh ones and then we are gonna do the Let It Snow that's a Lawn Fawn. These are brand new from Pretty Pink Posh. This is Love and Hugs. And what I was talking about earlier um, is a lot of companies, let me grab them, they have hot foil plates but then they also have so this is the die that will die cut hugs. And then I have the one for love. I don't know where I put the actual die for love, but this is a separate purchase. You get the die that die cuts hugs if you wanna die cut it from cardstock, but then you can also die cut this word. And I love the ability to kind of mix and match. Sometimes you feel like foiling, sometimes you don't, but you can then foil these and um, die cut them so that they go on your project and look like this. So I foiled that in that copper color. Let's pick a different color just for fun, shall we? I think we will. What color do we want to do? Let's do this bright purple. I don't use this very often, but let's go ahead and use it. And this color is called magenta, I think, not purple. Nope, fuchsia flower, ignore me. It comes in this little set. You can also get it individually. So I am going to go ahead and use the hammer mill for this. Shari, I do have some with pattern. Um, my very favorite, my very favorite. Let me find it while we're talking. Okay, well that's not, yes. My very favorite is Crimson Stars. I love this one. It is really awesome. I do think it looks better on larger surface areas. Uh, with delicate words, I don't love the patterns as much. And then if you want a rainbow background, imagine like rainbow snowflakes. I could even do one of those if you want me to. Um, it looks really good because then it's just going to have some rainbow design. So let me know if you guys want me to do that. Yes, Shari, this is the best. 
here's what it looks like. This Crimson Stars is my absolute favorite pattern. I like some of the others. There's like a little silver, like even in this set, this gold is really cool. There's also a silver one, um, but the Crimson Stars is my absolute favorite. In fact, I'm probably running a little low on it. I should probably get more. I always feel like I should have a backup. You won't see the pattern as much with thin lines. So I would very much recommend, yes, Shari's absolutely right. So I always recommend something that's chunky. Like I did, uh, Hero Arts had a Merry, no, Pink Fresh Studio had like a Merry Christmas die. And I did the Crimson Stars with it, but it was a big chunky letter. So you really could see the design and it was great. Oh, thank you so much, LB Cards. That's so nice. And Catherine says, you made me buy a couple rolls of the Crimson Stars. Yes. Nicole's favorite is red. Kelly says, imagine that. Oh, look, it came right off. Look at those purpley fuchsia flower, I guess it's what it's called, greetings. It foiled it perfectly. So these, again, uh, pretty pink posh. Now, you can also foil the reverse of this. I don't normally love it as much, so I'm not going to. <laughs> but you can play just play with it so the great thing then is and this is a good time to talk about this the coordinating dies if you use washi tape post-it tape low tack tape to tape your die around your foiling no matter what you're foiling tr don't get the tape on the actual foil, the low tack of it will lift up some of the surface of that. So I always try to do it right off the edge. In fact, if you need to use a couple pieces, I say do that because you don't wanna mess up your foiling. Let's go ahead and die cut both of these at the same time. And then we're gonna do the Lawn Fawn one and put our card together. How about that? So let's line up hugs. And I have a card um, on my channel today for Pretty Pink Posh where I used the hugs and I did foil it in that copper color. And please ignore how warped my plates are. They are going to the spa after this. I'm going to try to flatten them out. The spa is in my kitchen. <laughs> Yes, Shari says the reverse of the Lawn Fawn words is nice if you use the dies to cut them out, for sure. So look how cute these are. These would be really cute, like on die cut hearts, wouldn't they, for Valentine's Day? Very fun. So I'll just put those to the side for now. All right. So let's get my little magnet tool. It really does work great for small foil plates. And let's grab our, well, where do you think I put my long fond words? Oh, of course. I know it's here somewhere. Oh, here it is. So this is an awesome winter big scripty word set from Lawn Fawn. Foil plates for the words and coordinating dies. Um, I think that there will be more of these. I'm winking. <laughs> um, so I love them because definitely in the Lawn Fawn style that we love. A lot of these are very Christmassy, but I picked Let It Snow because as I mentioned, I am not ready to give up the snowmen yet or the winter vibes for my crafting. And I am going to cut a little piece and we are going to foil Let It Snow on white and die cut it with the coordinating die. 
And one of the great things about these dies is they die cut super close to the word. So here's the, while that's heating up, look at how close that die cuts, which I love. It cuts out all the little bits and pieces in between the letters so you can kind of see through it. I think it's amazing. Yes, and it is the same as an older stamp set, Shari said. The great thing about having Shari here is she can tell us all the lawn fun things. <laughs> Thank you, Shari. So if you have the stamp set and the dies, you can add the foil plates to your, your stash and your collection. Lawn Fawn Everything, Deb says, absolutely. Heidi gives all the hearts for Lawn Fawn. Bye, E. Briggs. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, more info on the spa. I'm just going to boil some water and put a heavy pot on top of them with the water to flatten them. Jennifer McGuire has a video on YouTube. It works sort of good. Yeah, I don't think it works great, great, but it will extend the life of my plates enough. But check out her video if you want to try to flatten them. Spa is the dishwasher. Oh my gosh, that's funny. Oh yes, it is the famous Shari from Lawn Fawn, Deb. Deb says it's the famous Shari from Lawn Fawn. It sure is. Yes, and Shari says, if you have the stamp set and the dies, you are already halfway there. Oh, look, I pulled it up and it just came right up. Look at that. Isn't it cute? Oh, you guys, I love it so much. Okay, before I move this Spellbinders Glimmer out of the way, do you want me to foil rainbow snowflakes since I have that foil played out and it would look good? Let me know. Don't I, don't I have one that's open though? Hold on. Let's, let's see if I have, I thought I had a roll of rainbow open. I can open this one, but let me look real quick like, oh yeah, I do. I thought so. If you want me to, yes, I feel amongst the great, yes. Take it away, Shari. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> All right. Yes, yes. Okay, let's go ahead and foil it before I turn it off. The mercury glass in rainbow would be pretty too. That's the next thing. You want snowflakes or mercury glass? Rainbow snowflakes. I think it will look really, really cool in the snowflakes. Let's just do that. That was my first inclination. So let's do, oh, and there are a couple different rainbows. I do think I'll do the littler one. Are these both the little one? There is a bigger one too, but, or at least there used to be. I love the rainbow foil. Look how pretty the rainbow foil is. We, as crafters, we need all the rainbow things, right? Both. <laughs> yes, let's do the snowflakes. All right, let me get some paper. I, I cut a lot of this these sheets of paper in half prior to this today. Okay, while that's heating up, we are going to go ahead and die cut Let It Snow. This is how I actually do things when I am crafting. I generally try to be doing something else while my machine is heating up. So I'm just going to look through here. And let's get our cutting plates. Rainbow all the things, Mindy says. Absolutely. Hello, Miss Mindy. Yeah, if Shari was here, we could just tell her to take it away, couldn't we? Look at that, you guys. Isn't it cute? Oh. I just love it. Perfect foiling, perfect die cutting. Absolutely amazing. Okay, 
rainbow foil it is. Let's see how these pretty hero art snowflakes look. You're so welcome, Christine. I'm so glad that you've loved it. All right. You can already see how cool it's going to look. I'm going to have to make something with this when we're done. It's magic, so I'm going to go slow. Look at that. Oh my goodness, you guys. Look how pretty. So, so pretty. My lights in here make it a little funky. So sorry. There, maybe. But so pretty. What do you guys think? Isn't rainbow foil fun? Now you can also, let's go ahead and just foil it because if I wait till later, I won't do it. Let's just go ahead and do the reverse. I always just try to do it all while I'm here. And then I have backgrounds for anything. Isn't it pretty, Heidi? Yes. So good. Rainbow looks awesome on everything Melanie said. Absolutely. All right. Oh, I have it on already. Let me go ahead and I don't really want to lose. Where do you think I put my let it snow die? Maybe I left it in the paper. I did. I don't want to misplace my my foil plates and dies. Uh, yes, Tiffany, foiling, or foiling, photographing foiled cards is super hard. Um, my, Mindy, are you still here? Because Mindy takes good photos too. Uh, takes really good photos. I generally find an angle and not right over the top is best for foiled cards. Um, time of the day matters a little bit, but generally for me, it's angle. Um, I'm hoping Mindy's still here and she can say how she photographs hers because she takes really good photos. I try to not get a reflection in it and I find that holding my camera at an angle works the best. Jennifer says, I just bought the reverse plate. The reverse plate really is one of the, or the solid plate is one of the best things. All right. Let's just pop up that corner. And look at that background. Ta-da! Let's hold them up together. But what did I do with it? Literally, you guys, how do I lose so many things? I have a huge stack of foiled projects. There we go. Super, super cool and pretty. The rainbow foil, it is another one that I highly recommend. Yep, angles, Shari is also saying angles are good for foil and glitter. That would be my biggest suggestion. I can't, it's hard to show here, but like pretend... If, if you're taking it, here's your camera. I always am just like taking, this is my card, I'm taking it at an angle instead of right over the top like I normally do because that way it eliminates a lot of the funny, you know, effects or at least most of them. Mindy says she uses light boxes for photography and it took her a while to have them positioned just right, but once in place, not moving them. And yes, it's all about the angle. Awesome. Thank you guys for helping answer that question. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is let's go ahead. I know we're at an hour, but I really wanted to show how I put together my card, kind of mixing and matching some of the elements. So for this card, we need our Let It Snow, which I already have, and then we need our Mercury Glass and Snowflake background. So I am gonna grab those if I can find them. Here we go. 
So remember at the beginning, I said that I like to foil on a half sheet of cardstock and then I like to die cut it. Um, you can also use a paper trimmer, but I love to die cut it. So we're actually gonna die cut both of these. I know a lot of this background in this particular card gets covered up, but I will tell you, when I looked at this card on a plain white background, compared to that little touch of foil there, which you could really kind of cut that in half and save half of this if you wanted. I thought it looked a lot prettier like this. So I was okay with it. Let me see. Oh, my foil plate, or my cutting plates, pardon me, are in terrible shape. So again, we want to try to avoid taping right on top of the foiling. And I'm gonna use a basic rectangle die. You can use any rectangle die that you have to die cut our background. And I'm just keeping it on the edge of my die, trying not to touch the foil at all. Let's see, Pam says, did I miss that wave plate? And if so, who makes it? I don't think I used a wave. Do you know which one I mean? Lots of good suggestions for angles and light in the chat too. Thank you guys. Rainbows for the win, Margo says. All right, so there is my first background. And then you get a perfect foiled background. You could do a smaller one. For this card, I didn't want to, but see, die cut the whole thing out. And I have just found, and I've learned over time, instead of trying to get it on that half, that little quarter sheet, I guess, of cardstock, this just works better. I don't get near as mad. I don't have near as many mistakes. All right, when I was looking at my card, this is kind of a happy little accident, by the way, how I figured this out. I had co briefly considered, I'll pull out, this is the die from Spellbinders. I had considered just doing this, but I didn't really want the blue up in the corners. And so I was like, I wonder what I could do. I could probably cut a circle. If you do have a circle, that would probably work. But I thought about these arched dome dies and the large one, happy coincidence. This is an arched dome die from Simon Says Stamp with a Spellbinders die. It follows that curve perfectly. So we're gonna die cut our mercury glass background with that arched dome. Oh yeah, my plates are hor in horrible shape, you guys. Please don't look at them. I'm probably going to order new ones. I am going to try to flatten them just for the time being, but I need new ones. These are, I actually said some bad words earlier. <laughs> I was so irritated with my, my cutting plates because this one is bad, bad, bad. And I did find this screw, good news, for my spellbinders, but have I got out my um, little Allen wrench to put it back in? That's a no, I have not. So I am not gonna worry too much about this down here because I will need to trim it down. But look at this. All I really cared about was that rounded edge. So now it fits perfectly behind this. I'm just gonna go ahead and trim that down. That was a complete happy accident. I had to share it with you because when that happens, and I don't have to like mess around with it. I'm so, so happy. All right, I'm gonna move that out of the way. Let's zoom in just a tiny, tiny little bit. Work Plate Club, Christy said, absolutely. Bonnie says, when you flatten them, does it help with the cuts in the plate? Um, it helps a little bit, but not to me, I don't think that great. Maybe it's just me, but I generally just will replace them. But for the short-term fix, I definitely need to flatten them a little bit. 
until my new plates arrive. So I didn't measure it even. I just cut off a little bit on the bottom so it will be hidden underneath. And that looks like that's gonna work. Oh, isn't it a beautiful die? So I should show you what that comes from. Because we're really doing a mix and match of all the things today. So this is the set. It is on sale at Spellbinders. I don't know if I put a link for that or not, but isn't it awesome? And I used this guy. You can use your the snowman without. I loved how he had some decorative to him. So this was on that wood grain lawn fawn background with a pretty pink posh, big greeting. Super, super fun. So this is the set we're using, but you might notice he doesn't have arms. So from the uh, dancing snowman, I'm gonna use the arms from that. Arms, gloves, I think that's it. But because just if you have any other snowman set that has some arms, I think it would work. Deb, that's me too. Uh, I, I'm exactly the same way. I'm just throwing it out there that if you want to try to flatten them, you can. And I'm going to have to until my new ones come, but then these are going in the garbage. Because I get mad. And we're just going to pop that with a little liquid glue right behind. So pretty. Now I did, because this video was mostly about foiling, I just wanted to kind of share, you know, putting a, an entire card together here at the end. Um, I have all my die cutting done. I did die cut my snowman from some of the plush Simon Says stamp cardstock, or not plush, the velvet, that's what it's called, velvet. It's white velvet, so it has great texture, and it really, I love it. I just need to poke out all these little pieces. Let's see. Thank you so much, Mindy. I love mix and match too, Deb. Thank you guys for giving Mindy all the love. That was nice. And Miss Shari. All right. So, I'm going to pop his little hat on his head, and before I glue him down, I am going to take like a little scrap of black cardstock. I know this is super high tech. <laughs> I am going to just cut it here because I want it to go back behind the mouth. You could punch a circle, die cut a circle, or you could just be lazy like me and trim a rectangle. The hat is going to work for the eyes, but we're just going to, whoops, gonna put that right behind his mouth. I'm just going to use my tweezers to help hold that down. And I'm going to put a little glue here on the back and we're going to pop him into our card. And I see I missed some little tiny circles. Yay, Lori, I'm glad you got to watch during your lunch break. That's awesome. And I'm going to tuck him right here underneath the edge. You guys probably are not gonna be surprised that I really, this gives me snow globe vibes, and I love all the snow globes. I know we're not in Christmas, but I'm okay with that. I'm okay with my, my snowman card um, here in the winter months. So these are the arms from the dancing snowman. This is, I don't need that part, so we're just gonna alter it a little bit. But I die cut these from some brown textured cardstock from Lawn Fawn. 
all of my cardstock here. Um, not this. This is soft navy from Simon Says Stamp, but any of the other elements are from Lawn Fawn. I love, love, love the Lawn Fawn textured cardstock. It is my absolute favorite. Oh, yay! Anything can go in a snow globe. That is absolutely right. So before my glue dries, I'm just going to tuck his little arms underneath. Okay, then I want to go ahead and position my foiled sentiment first. And much like any other card where maybe I have a larger script sentiment or a larger sentiment, we are going to complement it with some smaller Maybe I better glue this down. Some smaller sentiment strips. Have I bought a tape runner since I've seen you guys last? I sure haven't. So we're liquid glue it is. And we're just going to kind of pop this right here. And I'm just going to do that. All right. For his hands, there's a little layering piece in the Dancing Snowman. So we are going to give him some cute little mittens. Susan says, I'm addicted to all things snowmen. Me too. Shari's probably laughing. She knows. And we're going to, I did everything in blues. I, I'm kind of over my, my, my Christmas reds for, for now. I love red. You guys know this. Uh, and I love all the reds and pinks for Valentine's right now, but I'm loving the blues for some nice wintry vibes. And then we're going to, these are some greetings from a Pretty Pink Posh holiday sentiment set, but I loved the winter vibes of these and I love being able to extend the life of something that is holiday but you can use it beyond. Tracy said no ATG gun. So it's really annoying when you're I did, I was using it, but what's annoying is when it messes up and you lose an entire roll. It would not work correctly, and I just have not gotten anything. I'm not loving it. I know, it's, it's somewhat controversial. Shari says to throw it in the trash. Some of the rest of you say to throw it in the trash, and some of you love it. I haven't decided. Still kind of in denial that the tape runner I liked is no more. I know I need to get over it. <laughs> Shari said, are you like Jin who uh, hates winter but loves snowmen? Uh, yeah. Although I'm not a mermaid like her at all. I know she's got all that, the mermaid vibes. All right. The thing that makes the snowman the cutest is this wonky little carrot nose that comes in the set. I mean, it is, watch this. It instantly gives his face the cutest. It makes it so cute. Look at that. Isn't he darling? And then, of course, we're just going to embellish with snowflakes and some little embellishments. And I, honestly, our time is not too bad here, so I might just go ahead and finish it off. Sometimes I'm a little worried about how, how long I've been on. Yes, Yvette says, I love my ATG. Shari says, trash in all caps. Oh, you guys make me laugh. 
Yes, and Heidi says it's a love-hate for sure. Mostly hate. <laughs> and I'm going to fill this little area. I mean, I think it's a snow globe. I don't know. It just kind of looks like one. I don't even... Watch, it's probably called a snow globe, and I don't even know. Let's look. No, it's called a Let It Snowman. I just love it. My snowflakes are all from Lawn Fawn Pixie Dust, um, glitter cardstock, and then some matte silver cardstock. Personality in a carrot, Deb says, absolutely. Bonnie said when she scrapbooked, she loved the ATG. I didn't never got into that. I've gone through several adhesives from my scrapbooking days till now. And apparently whatever I like is not the popular um, adhesive. Because <laughs> they always are discontinued. That's funny. Trash for sure. Ginger says that too. Oh my gosh, you guys are making me laugh. All right, so once we have our snowflakes, I'm sure this is going to shock all of you, but we need to add some little hearts and some other little snowflakes and little little bits and bobs, right? I'm sure everyone is just shook, aren't you? You didn't expect this at all. <laughs> I have to bring it back because I love hearts. And the You Warm My Heart greeting. To oh, I need more hearts than what I got out. I thought was the perfect little greeting for this little heart loving girl here. Yes, Jenna, me too. I love that little purple tape gun. Mine was in terrible shape, but it still worked. So we're going to start by putting these and then we're going to embellish um, the center of our snowflakes with some little pearls and additional little clay snowflakes. I like all the little embellishments as I'm sure everyone knows. So there's our little hearts. Let's get these are the winter snowflakes from Pretty Pink Posh. Liz, I love that. Liz says, um, the community here on my channel is amazing and there is so much love. Yes. I would like to second that. I missed you guys during, <laughs> during my extended break. It was nice to have some time off, but I was ready for today for sure. Um, this is the best community. Hands down. All right, let's go ahead and put some, I like these little light blue snowflakes for my light blue vibes I've got going. Oops, I need one more. There's also um, some white, which I always love, but I'm really liking these little light blue ones. Oh, Tracy says she just hung up a pink felt heart garland in her craft room. Oh, I'm going to. I gotta go down to my mailbox and get my Poshta Design heart dies. I'm gonna be felting all of the things. I noticed it was delivered, but I just have not made it down to the end of the street to get my mail today. I'm excited. And I thought some little silver bits and bobs too. So the last thing which I will do off camera is I just need to add it to a card base like this one. But there you go. Lots of foiling and I just wanted to share, you know, how you can kind of mix and match to make a card. Ginger says yes to the hearts. Every card needs a little more love. Oh, I love it. Yes, 
So much fun. Okay, now, did I miss anybody's questions? I know here, as I was putting my card together, I probably missed some things. Let me know if I missed anything. Beatrice said it was a very long two weeks without you. Yes, I'm sorry. Thank you guys for letting me have um, a little break. It was very, very nice to um, just kind of have a little bit of time off. Shari, are you bragging that your dyes came yesterday? <laughs> have you already started making hearts? Yes, I do too. Jennifer says, I love how the foil background changes color in the light. Absolutely. Tracy got her posh to order yesterday too. Okay, so here, this is why Nicole's came later. It's because Shari reminded me to order them and I, as I, because I almost forgot, she knows I always forget. And as I was ordering, one of the die sets sold out, so I will have to get it when she restocks. But um, I'm sure I was one of the very last people to get, <laughs> to get my order in. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes, Deb, I will do all of that as soon as we're done here, for sure. Thank you for reminding me. I appreciate it so much. Heidi wants to know if Shari will share her projects. I bet she does. Do you follow Shari on Instagram? Please, please follow her. She just put them on a magnet sheet. She's had work to do, no hearts yet. It's a bummer when you have work to do and you can't play. <laughs> that was definitely, I, I feel that. Yes, Christine, I'm going to have to get some in the in the next or the set that I missed in the next when the next release comes. All right, I'm just going to look and see if I've missed anything. I don't think so. Okay, you guys, if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments. Um, replay crew, please drop me any questions you have in the comments. I'd be happy to answer them. If you want to see more foiling in the future, definitely let me know. I would be down for, for doing more foiling. I love it. And um, I'm so happy to be back. So definitely look for our Friday videos. They will continue all month, month long. Liz says, I'm so glad you're back. Yes. <laughs> She said she had to, to in her rehab. <laughs> That's so funny. I love it. I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend. I hope you get some crafty time in. I hope for anyone who bought the machine or has had the machine and was afraid to use it, I hope this has maybe given you that little kick or inspiration to get it out of the box and to just play and foil. And once you've made some stuff, then you can put some cards together and just have a good time. So I hope everyone has a wonderful crafty weekend and I will see you all next Friday. Bye. The supplies used in today's video are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here is another project that you might be interested in. Please remember to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell to never miss a new live video. Thank you so much for joining me today and we'll catch you next time.